it's one of the greatest college football weekends all year or maybe in the last five to ten years coming up October 15th. And we got all the teams, the names, and prospects you should be watching this weekend right here on Locked On NFL Draft. Let's go. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. October 15th is coming. If you know that date, you know the history of college football. There have been a few games on that particular date. Could another one this weekend make history on October 15th, 2022? Boy, there are plenty of games, and we're going to break down a few of them here. We're going to talk about the prospects with my guys, Eric Crocker, former NFL, AFL defensive back. See him flexing right there. Bench 350 this morning to get ready for the show. Down in the bottom corner, that's Ryan Tracy from Rogue Analytics at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter. Ryan didn't bench 325, but he squatted 850, getting those quads ready for the show. And then, of course, Thursday show, that means our man Rob Rang, senior draft analyst for Fox Sports, a good friend, known him for a very long time. Rob got ready for the show by watching the Mariners blow a 7-3 lead against my Astros yesterday. <laughs> Woo! Sorry, Rob. I had to do it. Sorry, my man. It did happen. I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> Jordan Alvarez. Three, Rob. I, I was, it was so exciting. It was so incredible. Uh, but we've seen it before, and maybe you'll get to see game four. I hope you get to see game four because in game four, the Astros will win up in Seattle, and that's really going to sting that much more. But this is Locked On NFL Draft. This is not Locked On MLB. We're talking NFL Draft. We're talking prospects. And this show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Today's episode of Locked On is presented by Prize Picks Daily Fantasy Made Easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to ten times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars with promo code Locked On. That's PrizePicks.com promo code Locked On. Now, what are we going to be locked on this weekend? We're going to be locked on a number of games, but one of them right out of the shoot, I believe it's a, I think it's a noon Eastern. Nine Pacific game. I believe it's early in the morning. I say morning. I don't know how many people are out after a big night on Friday. But Penn State goes to Michigan. And if there's a team that, I don't say, not that I whiffed on, but that I probably could have been a little bit more up on, it's probably Penn State. But, man, they are athletic, and they get after it. Penn State taking on Michigan. And there have been some guys and some prospects in this one, Rob Ryan, that we definitely need to keep our eyes on, especially at the receiver and the skill positions. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I think that when you start off with Michigan Wolverines, that, that was a team that, frankly, I was a little bit low on. I, I didn't think that Jim Harbaugh would be able to turn this team around. You, you lose Aiden Hutchinson. You lose all the talent that the Michigan Wolverines lost a year ago. And yet here they are very much back in uh, the driver's seat. I mean, o- Ohio State, obviously, uh, as a, a top – four team in the country right now but Michigan is right there too and and I didn't think that it would be the offense that would be driving this club but you got Ronnie Bell and you got Roman Wilson and those two dynamic wide receivers with uh, you know spectacular young quarterback and JJ McCarthy I just really think that that's a exciting uh you know offense here uh, and then when you look at Penn State and the cornerback and Joey Porter Jr., I mean, oh, my goodness, this is yeah. the, the one-on-one matchup that everybody is excited about. You look at Porter and obviously the NFL bloodlines, he's named Joey Porter Jr. for a reason. But this is a cornerback rather than an edge rusher. And he has the length. He has the physicality. I know he has the speed, at least on in terms of the 40-yard dash. Does he have the speed to actually be able to run with Ronnie Bell and Roman Wilson? To me, there's a lot of really fast same matchups, as you talked about, John. But this is the first one to get the, this weekend going. I, I'm excited to see these two guys especially go run head-to-head with, with Bell, with Wilson, against Porter. I, I think that it's going to be a fascinating matchup that every NFL scout with their soul is going to be watching. Croc, you and I talked about Joey Porter Jr. and probably back in the back was back in the summer, and it was just funny because you and I independently had watched yeah. Joey Porter Jr. 
And it was like you were tweeting about it. I was watching. I was like, whoa, he's saying this. Wow, we're seeing the same thing. Joey Porter Jr. I'll ask you this, though, first, because Michigan does have two receivers. Ronnie Bell, bigger receiver. Roman Wilson, flat-out speed. He's 4'3", legit speed. Uh, I talked to his former receivers coach, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's got Will Fuller-like speed. For you, and maybe this is for all defensive backs, did you have a preference of which guy you wanted to face, the fast guy or the big physical guy? Give me the big physical guy because I was a big physical corner. So you put a big physical guy in front of me where it's a little easier to read his moves, especially somebody like me who, you know, I wasn't a blazer at the cornerback position. That's probably why I didn't have this long, illustrious NFL career. But, you know, running in the mid four fives to four six, uh, yeah, I take the big guy all day. I can see his movements coming. Um, I can read him down. He's not going to bully me at the line of scrimmage or throughout routes. So uh, playing with anticipation was something you have to make sure that you work on, especially with those bigger guys. But when you have the guys that have the Will Fuller type speed, it's tough. tough. It it puts a little bit more pressure on you each and every snap to not take a bad step. You got to make sure that your technique is a little on point. Now, if you're someone out there who has Denzel Ward type speed where you're going to run in the four threes, then, you know, you have a little bit more wiggle room. But uh, at least for me, it was tougher going up against those guys that had that tremendous speed because one step and you're in trouble. Right, Tracy, I know you do locked on Chiefs. And a couple of years ago, the Chiefs ended up drafting a shorter, stout running back in Clyde edwards Lair. I don't know if they've gotten all that they wanted out of him, but do you find any issues with drafting a shorter running back, i.e. Blake Corum has been crushing it for Michigan I don't know that he compares totally to Clyde edwards Lair, but just a shorter, more stout running back. It's a guy I think could play in the NFL. Blake Corum could be the star in this game. What do you think about him and his value going forward to the NFL? Physically, I don't think there's any, any problem with drafting a, a smaller stature running back, especially if he can, once he's in contract, drive the pile. Uh, you see Clyde edwards Lair do that quite often. He did it at LSU all the time. The difference was that edwards Lair out of the backfield was, was a, an arrow route catching machine. Yeah. And that's what <clears throat> I haven't seen enough out of Corum. I think Corum's a central matchup here, though, because I feel like despite not having like the greatest interior three on the offensive line for Michigan, I, I do feel that they can get some good push. I think that interior defensive line on the other side has got some holes that it can be taken advantage of. And the second level, especially if you can get Corum to the edge around those tackles that are both playing pretty well, I think he's going to have room at the second level. So I, I do think that despite wanting to throw the ball around the yard like we all know, I think he does have some matchups that he can explore it, and I have no problem taking a smaller guy if he's able to show me that, A, he can get through the traffic in between the tackles and that when he does hit that edge, he has the vision to escape the pocket, get away from the second level when he has an opportunity. I, I, you can give me Blake Corum and Deuce Vaughn from K-State all day long, and I'm, I'm fine with it. And to, and to Eric's point about you know, playing DB, kind of the, the, what you were – I mean, in college, I was a, a slow safety but I'll tell you this, I did not want to see a small running back come out of that pile because that dude was going to embarrass you. In my senior year, we had one from out of San Jose, California. Dude was 5'5", five, five, and I'll never forget, in training camp, he popped out of a pile, and I, I couldn't see him. And he popped out of the pile and ran me over, and I'm like, oh, my God, forget this. So from that point on, I've always kind of been a fan of shorter Jaquiz Rogers-like running backs, and I see that a lot of that with Blake Corum, probably a little bit better athlete uh, than Quiz was. Uh, back at Oregon State, but Quiz was a heck of an athlete, and I think Blake Corm and Deuce Vaughn could be in that vein as well. All right, we're going to talk some Pac-12 when we get back, but I want to keep you and your family safe. That's what I want to do. That's the goal. We want to be, um, you know, the NFL and NFL PA got together about concussions, and they kind of, hey, we got to keep our players safe, right? Well, this isn't quite concussions, but it's your house. It's your home. It's your stuff. It's your belongings. Well, simply safe can help you keep your home secure. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. It's cutting edge technology powered by 24-7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. So I travel on the weekends to games. I mean, three of the last four weekends we've been gone for a game out of town. Simply Safe could help me and they're gonna help you. With 24-7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency. Even if you're not home or can't be reached, simply safe blanket your home and protection, HD security cameras for inside and outside your home, smarter ways to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real. 
Our monitoring experts use proprietary advanced response technology to visually confirm when a break-in is real so you get the highest priority police dispatch. Customize the perfect system for your home in just minutes at simplysafe.com. That's simply, S-I-M-P-L-I, simplysafe.com slash lockdown NFL. Save 20% on your Simply, Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. I'd like to thank you again for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen every day. And make sure you check out NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL. Locked On's local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football, plus betting advice from the field's leading experts, Bet Online. Follow NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL, available on the Odyssey app. YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Now, last week, my man Eric Crocker was not so much complaining, but he was sticking up for the Pac-12. Like, man, we are not talking about the Pac-12 enough. What is going on with us? Well, let's talk about the Pac-12. And, of course, Rob Rang is in Pac-12 country as well, and we got a great one. I think even though Utah ended up getting smashed by UCLA, they ran into a buzzsaw as UCLA, but USC struggles with Utah, whether it's in Salt Lake, whether it's in the college, it doesn't matter. USC struggles with Utah. Eric, I'll start with you. A, does USC struggle with Utah? And B, if Caleb Williams were in the 2023 draft class with all these other quarterbacks, where would you rank him? You know, I haven't thought about where I would rank him just yet, starting at the quarterback position, right, with, with, with Williams. Uh, definitely an intriguing prospect. He has a little bit of, uh, listen, I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes, but kind of that free style yes. type Understood. play. He, he has a little bit of that to him. But some of my buddies, man, they rave about his ability. Like some guys that, you know, I talk to my quarterback guys and they talk about the uh, type of throws that he's able to make, just the pure arm talent. That's all there. I think the consistency is the thing that's lacking. I think, you know, going back to Patrick Mahomes, him in college, you might say the same thing now. He wasn't throwing, Patrick Mahomes wasn't throwing to Jordan Addison when he was there at Texas Tech. Right. But uh, big time ability there. I think as it pertains to USC, their biggest thing in, in this matchup is the defense. That's where USC has kind of struggled the most, especially starting games off. So if you look at the first halves of these games, very close. They're not just coming out and just throttling teams right away. As the games go on, they kind of wear on teams a little bit more. And even more than Caleb Williams carrying this team, it might be Die, the, uh, yeah, the running back, back Travis that Dye, Josh yeah. from Oregon. He is doing a terrific job. He's their one of their better pass catchers on the team. He's running extremely hard between the tackles, outside the tackles, pass protecting. We've talked a lot about these different running backs, and quietly he's putting together a tremendous senior season. So uh, I think for USC to come out and just maybe punch Utah right away they're definitely going to have to be a little tighter on that defense. And they have a nice defensive player by the name of Tuli Tuapulatu. I don't want to I don't butcher his name, but anyways. Tuli Pulotu. It's pretty good. There we go. He's the big defensive lineman. He's leading the team right now with seven sacks. He had five and a half, half sacks last season. He's been tremendous moving around there, being dynamic. Big guy, 6'4", 290 pounds, but his cat quick. And another one of these guys, and again, I don't know if it's because Pac-12, they play late at night. And I know for me, because I like USC, I, I stay up and I'm watching them at 11.30 p.m where a lot of people are going to sleep, especially people that live uh, in an hour time zone ahead of me, which is the East Coast. But yeah. a tremendous player there, and I think people are just kind of missing some of these prospects at USC. I'll tell you this. If USC ever plays Clemson, I do not want to ever call that game. Because if Tulip, Tui Pelotu tackles Ui Ungulale, there's no <laughs> way. That, I mean, it's, it's going to be ridiculous. Rob, uh, Eric mentioned Jordan Addison. Came over from Pitt. I feel like I'm watching – I don't say I'm watching a different receiver, but I feel like I'm watching a more explosive receiver. Maybe I'm wrong in that, but did a lot of stuff in the slot at Pitt. In what you've seen of Jordan Addison thus far through half of the 2022 season at USC, has he been more impressive or as impressive or less impressive than what you saw last year when he was at Pitt? 
Well, I think he's been at least as impressive and perhaps even more so. I, I just I put a lot of stock into any time you have a player who is dominant in one conference and then goes to a whole other conference and it's just as dominant. And and so it, it's the 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 change of direction, it's the ball skills, it's the it's instant acceleration um that, that I've seen from him throughout his career. Um, that really is exciting. And then, of course, when you have a quarterback like Williams, I mean, just throwing the ball to him. And the the immediate rapport that these two players have had, despite the fact that, of course, they didn't play together until this season, to me, is just really exciting. And and I love this matchup. And I, and I love some of the players that you mentioned before, Croc. I mean, like, you know, with, with, with Die in particular. I mean, his balance through contact, Caleb Williams, his improvisational skills that you kind of alluded to there with, uh, you know, the Patrick Mahomes references and things like that. But I, I love the the one-on-one matchup. Again, we talked about this previously. Uh, the one-on-one matchup between Addison and then Clark Phillips III for, for Utah. I mean, what a dynamic playmaker this is. And, you know, we talked about this in last week's show. I mean, the Utah Utes and Kyle Whittingham, they just churn out NFL prospects at every single position. And one of the better cornerbacks I've seen from Utah over the last couple of years was Jalen Johnson wound up going to the Chicago Bears a couple of years ago. I I think that Clark Phillips third is a much better player. He's got better ball skills, and that's saying something. I I thought that uh, the Jordan was a a, a legitimate first-round caliber kind of player for the Bears. Um, And and he's proven as such for – excuse me, Jalen Johnson has proven as such since – I really think that Clark Phillips, this to me, this is the kind of matchup if Utah is able to, you know, kind of turn the page because you're right, John. I mean, Utah feels like they have been one of the best, better teams in the Pac-12 for a long time now. Obviously, they won the Pac-12 title a year ago, but they have always struggled to beat USC. This might be the game in which they're able to do so because they are bigger. They are more physical. And I think that they have the cornerback who might be able to lock down Jordan Addison. And I don't know if there's another cornerback in this conference that can do so. Ryan, do you agree? Do you think Clark Phillips has the opportunity to lock down Jordan Addison? Is that the matchup to watch in this one? And USC, UCLA, Utah, a little three-way Pac-12 South battle. What's the best team of those three? Well, that's a great question. I do think it's going to be a great battle with Addison. I think his ability to separate underneath, say, step three, if you can get a quick stem and get gone, that, that's where I think it's going to be key from what I've seen. And granted, it hasn't been a lot of tape yet, but I, I am e- eager to watch that. But it's also going to be, I think, just part of a bigger matchup that I think is about, like you said, that, that three-way triumvirate here. I think the guy that we haven't talked about is somebody that kind of got got last week. Zero touchdowns, one interception. I think this game could could tilt on Cam Rising. Can he back up himself? Can he can he lift himself back up? He does a good job leading his team, lifting his teammates. But I think he needs a little lift. And if he can get that going, I think there's opportunity there to keep this tight. Like Croc said, the defense is a little bit suspect at times. If he can keep them close, can they pull this? There's just those matchups. The Raiders and the Chiefs, they play each other within a point because they know each other. And that's kind of what reminds me here. In the end, when you put it all together, I really feel, at least in the last couple of weeks, I have to lean towards UCLA as the best of the three of them in terms of being well-rounded. There's a guy that I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute that I think kind of adds to that. But right now, the way they're playing this week, I'd have to put UCLA on top. Yeah, I don't know that you get too much of an argument unless Eric Crocker just lets his his, uh, USC (laughs) – there it is (laughs) – fight on. Uh, He lets that, that go. If your team needs an interior offensive lineman, may I direct you to number 72 in the white jersey on Saturday night, and that's Andrew Voorhees. Strong as an ox. He's not Elijah Vera Tucker. He's probably a little stronger. I thought ABT was probably a little bit more athletic movement-wise, agility-wise. But Voorhees will get in a phone booth and knock the absolute bejesus out of you. So if you want to watch some trenches, watch number 72, Andrew Voorhees. Uh, for USC, that's going to be a fun one. Now, we were talking about Jordan Addison a little while ago. We're going to talk about a bunch of receivers for one team in one of the marquee games taking place in Knoxville, Tennessee this Saturday. We'll talk about that next. But we were mentioning Jordan Addison. And each week we talk about how many yards. I set the price picks number at 85 yards. You're going more or less Jordan Addison, more or less than 85 yards against Clark Phillips in Utah 
I think we some of us would go more, some would go less. But if you love that sort of thing, then Prize Picks is for you. It's that game inside the game. You're watching that game, and you're seeing Quentin Johnston last week go for 207. That was definitely a more over at PrizePicks.com. It's very simple. You're watching college football. You pick two to five players, and if and if they will go score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to ten times your money in any entry. You don't compete against other people. It's just you against you. Price Picks offers projections on any sport you're watching. College basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, esports, cricket. If you're getting down on some price picks on cricket, God bless you. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals, currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. Deposit 100, Prize Picks gives you 100. Deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, guys, let's jump into one of the other games that we want to talk about, and it takes place in the SEC because. Every show that talks about college or NFL has to talk about the SEC. It's contractually mandated. Greg Sankey put that in all of our contracts, whether you all knew that or not. So we've got to talk Alabama, Tennessee. So I'm going to just open it up. There are a lot of intriguing things about this particular game. Does Bryce Young play? Tennessee wide receivers could be the best group in the country. Ryan Tracy, what intrigues you the most about Alabama against Tennessee? This is it. This is where you set yourself apart and make yourself that top prospect that I had on my board coming into the season. I need to see Will Anderson dominate. I need to see him do something that we haven't seen him do this year to make Hennon Hooker uncomfortable. Is he going to chase him down? I can't guarantee that, but he's got to move him off of his spot. He's got to make opportunistic plays that help the rest of that defense. Who knows if Bryce is going to play? You might need that defense to be constrictive. That's what I'm looking for. Will Anderson's the guy that I'm watching. There's nobody else. Eric Crocker, Alabama, Tennessee. A lot of receivers in this game. Your kryptonite, well, kind of. You shut them down. <laughs> what, what, uh, Alabama, Tennessee? What are you looking for? Cedric Tillman, man, and he won't be playing, and that's the guy that I want to watch the most. Now we'll see if he does play. He's not a hundred percent. He's been dealing with an injury over the last last few weeks. That's a yep. receiver who I feel like is kind of flying under the radar, big time ability. And these are the games that he gets up for most. If you go back a year ago, I mean, how many yards did he have against Georgia? How many yards did he have against Alabama? Over 300 yards between the two games and won't be out there. So I, I, I know he's going to be missing, but he has a quarterback, Hinton Hooker. I think all eyes are going to be on him because the question is, is he for real? We've been seeing what he's been doing. He's been playing at an extremely high level, but clearly, I mean, in anybody that's playing against Alabama, that's your biggest test to date. And uh, will he be that same dynamic quarterback that we've seen, that we saw play against Florida and what he's done in recent weeks? I mean, and just terrorize. Gosh, who was I watching Tennessee play against this past week? Where it oh, just was. It uh, was uh, LSU. 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 And it was just not closed out the gate. Now, had some help. There was a fumble on the kickoff, open the kickoff and all that. But he's terrific. He looks poised. Can he maintain that poisonous against Alabama? That's the thing I'll be looking for most in this game. Rob, Alabama, Tennessee, there's some matchups in this one. There's some absolute football playing dudes in this one. What stands out to you most about this one in Knoxville? Well, I mean, Ryan talked about it right off the bat. I mean, Will Anderson is supposed to be the number one player in this draft class, and yet we've only seen flashes of it so far. But one of the things that's most exciting about him is when he has needed to step up, he has done so. And, and I love the matchup between him and especially the left tackle for the Volunteers, Mincy. Um, this is a kid who is 6'6". He's 330 pounds to transfer from Florida. He is big. He is physical. He is nasty. Uh, I, I want to see that matchup and then i want to see if Hennon hooker is for real i mean can you step up against this type of pressure this is his senior bowl moment this is as big as it's going to get for him um and so we talked about this in last week's show i mean you guys had had him as i think you said the fourth or fifth rated quarterback on yep. your boards um he has been every bit as high on, on my board as well this is his opportunity to justify that, especially with the fact that he isn't going to have the full allotment of his wide receivers. And Alabama, as good as they are, and you got to just kind of kiss the ring anytime you talk about Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide, but still, 
they have got a whole bunch of inexperience in that secondary. Kool-Aid McKinstry, and I just love saying that name, uh, is a dynamic young cornerback, but young is the primary word there. And so I really think this is going to be a fascinating matchup. I think it's Alabama's biggest test to date, with all due respect to what they brought in Austin. Texas is an unbelievable performance that they had there. But I just thought that based on paper, that Texas shouldn't have been able to play with Alabama. But the fact is, they were the better team for a lot of that matchup. And I think that Tennessee is more physically gifted and might be able to pull this off. I'm not saying that Tennessee is going to beat Alabama. I think they're going to give them a little bit of a run, though. And I think that they've got the quarterback that might be able to actually pull it off. So to me, of all of the matchups in a spectacular Week 7 of college football, this is the one you absolutely have to watch. I think what Rob is alluding to is the fact that Alabama's favored by seven and a half. Ooh, that hook. Ooh. I'll say it for him. I think Tennessee gets inside that seven and a half. All right, last thing before we go. We're halfway through the season. And that's that's six games for most teams. Some teams had a buy, might be five. But we're halfway through the season. There's got to be a prospect for all of us that we're we've watched and we're like, whoa, that guy came out of nowhere. Or I was really down on that guy, but man, now I'm watching him and he is boy, he's taking his game to a different level. Rob, we'll start with you. You get one prospect, one prospect that has impressed you more than any other through one half of the 2022 season. Who will that be? So I'm going to sound like a complete homer here, and I get it, uh, because I live about an hour south of Seattle. But okay. watching Michael Penix Jr. Yeah. and what he was able to do for the University of Washington, <clears throat> obviously they've lost the last couple of games. He has not looked quite as good. But I can tell you this. I was up in the stands with a handful of NFL scouts, and the looks that we gave each other when – uh, Penix was able to just throw dimes. I mean, whether it be just the short, quick passes, whether it be the deep balls, whether it be the touchdown the field against the Michigan State defense that I really thought was going to be a lot better. Uh, again, the, the, when you exchange those looks with NFL scouts that I know have been on the road for the last 20, 30 years, then those are the kind of looks I'm, I, that I'm hoping for. Um, and so Penix is a guy that I thought was a draftable player. But now I think that he is legitimately a day two type of a guy. And considering how much talent there is the quarterback position this year, I certainly was not expecting that two months ago. No doubt. We've talked about Penix a lot. Eric Crocker, Rob Ryan gave the Pac-12 some love. Where are you going with your prospect? Oh, I'm staying Pac-12 too. And I actually mentioned him earlier and kind of gave him a little bit of love. And maybe I'm being a homer as well. But Tuli, Tui Pelotu. I practiced his name before we came on this show, and I still can't get it right. I, I just, I don't know if my, my mouth doesn't work that way or what, but I'll figure it out eventually. But, you know, you don't hear a whole lot of, about defensive linemen coming out of USC. And just last season, I watched San Francisco 49ers take Drake Jackson, the edge rusher, and they yeah. got him at one of the last picks in the second round. And he's been really good for the 49ers. They've been very impressed with what they've gotten from him. But... Flew under the radar a little bit. And I think this is another guy playing on the defensive line in the Pac-12 that's flying under the radar just a little bit. But he's been dominant. And if he can keep this going, again, seven sacks at this point in the season. If he keeps this going, I mean, what type of season are we talking about for a guy that's 6'4", 290 pounds? So, yeah, I got I to gotta bring him up. Very well done. Inside, outside. I like you going trenches. Very nice. Ryan Tracy, which prospect through half a season has impressed you the most? This, I tell you what, this has been tough, and, and I don't care that it, I think he's 24 eligible. This is his third season. Grayson Murphy made me go back to like try to find North Texas film because <laughs> I, I haven't seen him before now. Plays with power, has a good first step. He's been able to do everything but stay clean penalty wise. And I feel like that's that's something there, but I'll take the guy with the edge more than the guy that has to be, you know, fired up come Saturday or game day, whatever you want to call it. 6'3", 262. He's got that that body type that I think allows him to use his length well, but he's still not immobile. He's not a power end, in my opinion, at least from what I've seen to this point. So he's definitely the guy that surprised me. I didn't expect to him, and I guess he's got a brother as well. I, I should probably include them as a pair. <laughs> include them as a pair. Yeah, I, I do want to circle back around real quick and bring up one more guy, and it, it happens to be Quentin Johnston at TCU. But only because he has been very, very quiet 
up until the Kansas game. And obviously, he was loud in that game, had over 200 receiving yards, but only 320 receiving yards on the season. So can he have another performance like we saw last week? And that's a big if, especially when you look at the production that he's put out, not just for, uh, this season, but really throughout his entire career at TCU. So I want to see, can he follow up with another big-time performance could be the quarterback position, but I think people like Duggar. But that's going to be something to really be looking forward to. All right, mine's going to be me. Yeah, just he is. He's poking. Me. He just kept poking. He's like poke, 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 poke. <laughs> nah, that dude is sick, though. I can't say that he was. I, I had I had him rated relatively high. I had him number seventeen in my summer overall one hundred. A guy that I didn't have early on in my Harris one hundred got his way in the one hundred, and he's moving up very, very quickly. And that's Chase Brown from out of Illinois. Second in the nation in rushing. He's had 879 yards and has, I don't say he's carried Illinois, but he's carried Illinois. And he was a guy that I liked. And I remember watching the first game of the year, they played Wyoming. And I was like, oh yeah, Chase Brown. Yeah. And all of a sudden just took off. I think he could play in any offense. I think he is tough. He's got speed, his vision, uh, everything you want in a running back. 5'11", 210, around that range, 205, 210. Chase Brown. There are a few running backs that kind of fall in that category. Um, that one I liked, but I wasn't totally sure I felt Dwayne McBride for UAB has just gone crazy. Um, the big, big back. So those are two guys uh, that I definitely was kind of on the fence about, but man, they have pushed me over the fence and I am on team McBride and Brown. No doubt about that. And I'm on team rank team Crocker and team Tracy every single Thursday right here on locked on NFL draft. Thanks for making locked on your first listen every day. We've got something great for you on Friday. You just have to, you gotta have to stick around for this one, but this is going to be a fun show. An absolute blast, a steaming blast, if you will. Now make your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, Brian Peacock and former NFL scout, Matt Williamson, give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts, download this one, download them all. Listen to all of us talk ball. A big thanks to Eric Crocker, to Ryan Tracy, and, of course, to Rob Rang, Senior Draft Analyst for Fox Sports. I am John Harris, and we will see you tomorrow right here on Locked On NFL Draft. Let's go.